subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hi, everybody. How was your weekend? You are all welcome to Junior High School Hour on Joy Learning Channel. When you see me like this, then you know that we have English language. And I'm very, very happy to be with you. And my name, as usual, is Jacqueline Kunidwa Samoa, but you can popularly call me Auntie Jackie. You are all welcome to Junior High School Hour on Joy Learning. And today we are going to deal with consolidation that is a punctuation marks in short and we are going to talk about full stop the comma question mark as and when we need to use them okay we realize that day in day out in our writings in our i mean speaking we we, we don't even take note of our punctuation marks but they are very very important and um each mark or every punctuation has what it does in our sentences or in our oral speaking so we are going to take them one after the other I am going to deal with five for today and then next week I'm going to continue with the rest of the punctuation marks so as usual you get your books and your pens ready because you know that Auntie Jackie always asks for you writing your own simple examples like two or three all right so when you have your books be beside you it makes it quite simpler and then you need to jot down a few things or a few points that will help you even when you go to school. Okay, so help me. Let's go on now. Right, so you know we set objectives for every lesson we teach. And today, by the end of the lesson, you, my learners, will be able to write complex sentences using the comma and full stop appropriately. The next objective you have, you are going to write a passage of five lines using uppercase letters, lowercase letters, apostrophe, and colon appropriately. Again, you should be able to write sentences using the colon, question marks, commas, and full stops appropriately. And then, finally, we should be able to write a composition of two paragraphs each of five lines using upper and lower case letters, full stops, comma, apostrophe, colon, and exclamation marks appropriately. Now, these objectives are we have they are um, some uh, some are immediate and then some are long term. Uh, especially next week, we are going to um, really get all the objectives. But for today, we are going to at least achieve about two or three of them. But before I finish with punctuation marks, we are definitely going to achieve all our objectives. So I have both short-term and long-term objectives. Right, so let's go on. So my RPK, yes, I mean, your relevant previous knowledge, learners write sentences and essays at school and at home using punctuation marks like comma, the full stop, colon, and the question marks, etc., etc. We use them daily in, in our exercises in school even our writings in the house and all that. But do we know the effects or we, do we know their, their usage? I mean, the role they play in the sentences, we are definitely going to find out today. Get your books and your pens and make sure you write down something very, very important from these, all these that I teach today. Now, during reading, we see some marks or signs. Some of them are seen at the end of sentences. Now, others are also seen at the middle of sentences. They divide written matter into sentences, clauses, phrases, etc., etc. I take this again. Now, during reading, we see some marks or signs. Some of them are seen at the end of sentences. Others are also seen at the middle of sentences. Now, they divide written matter into sentences, clauses, and phrases. The signs or marks make reading interesting and understandable. The signs or marks make reading interesting and understandable. Now, without them, it will be very, very difficult to understand what we read. Okay, so I stand here. If I go like yesterday, I was in the house, nothing happened to me, and I just say, I just say these lines without any punctuation. It wouldn't even make any meaning 
it wouldn't make sense. Okay, so without punctuation marks, it will be very, very difficult to understand what we read and even what we write. Such marks or signs are generally called punctuation marks and exactly what I'm going to talk about today. Punctuation marks. So you see the essence of punctuation marks? They help us understand what we read. They give meaning to what we write and what we read. All right, so I clearly define what punctuation marks are. So punctuation marks change the meaning of compositions or sentences when they are not put or placed at the proper places. Punctuation marks change the meaning of compositions or sentences when they are not put or placed at the proper places. Now let's look at these examples. The first one, that is the A. My father, said Linda, has come. My father, said Linda, has come. And then the B we have. My father said Linda has come. My father said Linda has come. What do you realize here or what do you notice here? The first one, my father said Linda has come. And the second one, my father said Linda has come. I mean, we have the same writings there, but mind you, we have the punctuation marks differently. Okay, so when you look at the first one, I have it here. So these two sentences, the, one, the ones we read, I mean, are the same in writing, but have different meanings. They have the same writings, but they have different meanings. Now, this is due to the fact that the marks have been placed at different places in the sentences. Now, let's take the first one. The first sentence means that Linda was telling someone that her father had come. So let's go back and see. Linda was telling someone that her father had come. So my father said Linda has come. My father said Linda has come. Right, so Linda was telling someone that her father had come. Now let's look at the second one. However, the second sentence means that Linda's father was telling someone that Linda had come. So you see the difference? And it's all because of the, uh, the placement of the punctuation or the marks. So the second one, however, means that Linda's father was telling someone that Linda had come. But the first one was, was uh, simply saying that Linda was rather telling someone that her father had come. So it all depends on where you put the punctuation mark, okay, and how meaningful it is going to be for you. So now, let's study the punctuation marks. We have full stop, we have the comma, we have the colon, we have quotation mark, we have the hyphen, we have the brackets, we have the question mark, we have the apostrophe, we have semicolon, we have exclamation, we have the dash, and then parenthesis. So if you look at, I mean, what I have here, I have highlighted or given the ones I'm going to talk about today, I have given them beautiful colors, okay? And so it's a spelling out that I am going to talk about full stop. I am going to talk about the comma. I am going to talk about the colon. I'm going to talk about question mark and then the apostrophe. Okay, so we are going to take them one after the other to know what really goes into them. The examples we are going to give and then finally, I give you some exercises as usual. Okay, right, so let's move on. I start with a full stop. I start with a full stop. Now, it is used at the end of a sentence. That is a statement. It is used at the end of a, state, a sentence. Sorry, that is a state statement. Now, let's look at these examples. And like I told you, you know how we do it. Get your books. As soon as you see my examples, you try to write down your own examples, just two or three more, and then you add it up, okay? It makes you understand what I teach very, very well and very fast. Right, so we go through the examples. We have, 
he is eating and you realize that I have I have my full store or the particular mark I'm talking about I'm going to use red to let you identify them quite easier okay so he is eating I have the full stop there I have made a statement or oh, he has made a statement he is eating I am going to the hospital that boy is my brother I love Aku so much. He is eating. I am going to the hospital. That boy is my brother. I love Aku so much. We have more examples here. And I want to believe that you are writing your two or three more examples to add to my own. I love my brothers. That woman is so kind. The boys visited the zoo last week. She is so unique among her peers. Are you unique among your peers? What makes you stand out? Okay. She is so unique among her peers. It could be, he is so unique among his peers. Of course, I'm teaching both boys and girls. You are all unique in, in, I mean, one or the other. Okay. Right. So these are my examples under the full stop. And I would want to believe that you have written at least two or three more, you know, examples under the full stop. Okay. I have this funny picture here. Okay. And that's showing us full stop. You know, look at, look at the face, you know, with the nose, the teeth, the eyes, and then the eyebrow. Okay. It is showing that the full stop is just a dot. Okay. And so that's my diagram for today. Very, very funny, but that's what I had. Okay. Right. Again, in some abbreviations, it is used to show the omission of omission of letters. Sorry, in some in some abbreviations, it is used to show the omission of letters. Omission of letters. How do you understand that? It means if you don't want to write everything, we just shorten it. So we omit some, we omit some of the letters, and then we shorten it. So let's look at these examples. We have doctor. In the short form, as in DR, then there's going to be a full stop there. Then the full thing we have as in doctor, fully spelled D O C T O R. D O C T O R, doctor. Then we have sergeant, sergeant, S G T. And then we have the full spelling S E R G E A N T, sergeant. Then we have Mr. as in M-R. And the full one we have M-I-S-T-E-R. Mr. Any other you would want to add? Somebody will ask, what about Mrs.? Mrs. as in M-R-S. What will be the full writing? Okay, so in abbreviations, it is used to show the omission of letters. Give me two or three more examples as we do always. Now, another one, full stop is used in mildly imperative sentences. Full stop is used in mildly imperative sentences. Now, let's look at these examples. Today, we, we are dealing with more examples because the examples are going to let you understand better. Okay. And it's going to put you um, in a place where but you can also write down something on your own especially when you look at my examples, okay? So full stop is used mildly imperative, in mildly imperative sentences. Now examples, please call him for me. So you see that I have the full stop uh, in red ink. Please call him for me. Close the door gently. Close the door gently. I really would love to see you. I really would love to see you. Come over to my workplace tomorrow. Come over to my workplace tomorrow. We shall surely meet someday. We shall surely meet someday. Right. My next or the next thing I want to talk about is the question mark. The question mark. It has only one use. It is used at the end of a direct question. The question mark. It has only one use. It is used at the end of a direct question. Now let's look at these examples. Where is your father? 
Where have you been all day? You realize that I'm asking a question. Okay. And so you have, you see my question mark written or designed in the red, like with a red ink there. Where have you been all day? What is your full name? What is your full name? Have you two met before? Have you two met before? I think I have more examples. Do you know me? Do you know me? Does she look like her mom? Does she look like her mom? Then I, I think it's simply talking about the fact that um, does she resemble the mother? Kind of. Okay. Does she look like the mom? All right. Will you be back soon? Will you be back soon? Can I ask you for help? Can I ask you for help? You realize that all these uh, examples are in the form of questions and answers are not really giving. Okay, so that is for the question mark. Let's see. And that's my beautiful sign of question mark uh, with two, two eyes and it's a beautiful sign, right? So this is the sign of a question mark. All right. That is the sign of a question mark. I want to believe that you are jotting them down and writing your own examples as well. Now let's move on to comma, comma, comma. All right. So it has more uses than any other punctuation mark. It means that, um, we are going to talk about, we are going to talk more on comma okay and in different 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 ways okay so let's see now the first one it is used to separate a list of names or items it is used to separate a list of names or items so let's look at these examples now the sponge soap brush and comb are in the bucket what do you notice it is used to separate a list of names or items so we have the sponge soap brush and comb are in the bucket so you see my comma in between the sponge the soap marked in red all right so it is used to separate a list of names or items these are items okay i have one pair of shoes three school uniforms and one school bag i have one pair of shoes three uni school uniforms and one school bag so you see my comma here in red ink any other example are you writing down your examples now there are spoons plates napkins glasses and tissue papers on the dining table all right, so I was mentioning items as well, spoons, plates, napkins, and in between them, you can see the comma sign. In between them, you can see the comma sign, right? So that is for the first thing under comma. Now, B, let's see another use of the comma. It is used before direct speeches. It is used before direct speeches. Now, let's look at these examples. They said, we are afraid. They said, we are afraid. I will come out successfully, he said. I will come out successfully, he said. He is my baby brother, said Amina. He is my baby brother, said Amina. I am not eating that food, mommy said angrily. I am not eating that food, mommy said angrily i think i've said this time without numbers to my children <laughs> but i ended up eating anyway i am not eating that food mommy said angrily now let's go playing on the beach all the kids said they love to have fun right always all the time let's go playing on the beach all the kids said so that is another use of the comma let's see the third use of the comma, it is used when some adjectives precede nouns. 
it is used when some adjectives precede nouns. Now let's look at this. A short, fat, strong boy be the boy. A short, fat, strong boy beat the boy. Somebody was beating. By who? That short, fat, strong boy. All right. So we are defining the boy who beat the other boy. All right. And then we are saying that he is short, he is fat, and strong. Short, fat, and strong. And then he beat the other boy. Right. Three tall, fair colored girls are coming. Three tall, fair colored girls are coming. So which girls are coming? The three, the tall, fair colored girls are coming. The third one, a young, talented boy just left this place. A young, talented boy just left this place. And then we have two beautiful, dark, young ladies bought me this dress. Two beautiful, dark, young ladies bought me this dress. Right. That's the third use of the comma. And this is my beautiful sign for the comma. Okay. Mostly it's in between uh, uh, items or whatever. And then you bring it down there, comma. And that's my beautiful comma sign. I guess you love it. And I guess you are jotting down your notes. Because I warned you, or I told you to have one special book for English language and for all the other subjects as well. Okay, right. Now let's move on to the next function or the next use of the comma. It is used in direct addresses. It is used in direct addresses. Now examples we have, Kwejo, please come and eat. Kwejo, please come and eat. Sandra, don't forget to call me. Sandra, don't forget to call me. Kwame, I want to talk to you. Kwame, I want to talk to you. I can't do this anymore, Abiba said. I can't do this anymore, Abiba said. And then I have Tracy, I really want to know more about you. Tracy, I really want to know more about you. All right. The next use of the comma, it is used before some conjunctions in long sentences. It is used before some conjunctions in long sentences. Now examples we have, I met him, but I didn't greet him. I met him, but I didn't greet him. He passed the exams for he learned hard. He passed the exams for he learned hard. She met Kojo at the beach, but she passed by him. She met Kojo at the beach, but she passed by him. And then I have, Daddy enjoyed the meal. Meanwhile, it was Mommy who cooked. That's what they do. Always enjoying what Mommy does or what Mommy cooks. So Daddy enjoyed the meal. Meanwhile, it was Mommy who cooked. Now, the other one we have in contrasting, contrasting words, phrases and clauses that are introduced by the word not, commas are used. In contrasting words, phrases and clauses that are introduced by the word not, commas are used. Now, let's look at this. He comes here daily, not weekly. He comes here daily, not weekly. The player is in dire need of football boots, not jersey. The player is in dire need of football boots, not jersey. Can you add two more? I, I give just two examples, knowing that my learners are going to add more. Okay, so try add more for me. And then you know how we do it, okay? Now, a comma is used after yes or no, or a mild exclamation. A comma is used after yes or no, or a mild exclamation. Now, let's look at this example, these examples. We have yes, 
He is in the room. Yes, he is in the room. And then we have, no, you cannot do that. No, you cannot do that. And you see the comments there. I have another here. Yes, I'm coming over. Yes, I'm coming over. No, I will never do that. No, I will never do that. I think the last one or the last but the, not the least. Okay, let's see. It is used to separate a person's name from a degree, title or affiliation that follows it. Okay, it is used to separate a person's name from a degree, title or affiliation that follows it. Examples we have St. Joseph, PhD, was once a referee. Then we have Kwesi Bwachi, GFA, is dead. So it's used to separate a person's name from a degree, title or affiliation that follows it. Now we move on to apostrophe, apostrophe. And that one is up there, apostrophe. Now when a letter or some letters are taken away from some words, an apostrophe is used to show. When a letter or some letters are taken away from some words, an apostrophe is used to show. Now let's look at these examples. Can't, can't. So you see the apostrophe up there. But the full thing is cannot, cannot. Then we have want, that is will not. Want, we have will not. Then we have don't, that is do not. Do not. We have couldn't, could not. Then we have wouldn't, would not. And then didn't, did not. Okay, so when a letter or some letters are taken away from some words, an apostrophe is used. If you don't want to probably, I mean, write the full thing, for example, I cannot do what you're telling me. Okay, you can simply go like, I can't do what you're telling me to do. All right. Or probably you want to say, I, 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 I do not understand exactly what you mean. You can simply go like, I don't understand exactly what you mean. Okay. So more examples as usual. This time I've given you, in, I mean, an, enough examples so you can use them in forming sentences. Okay. Okay. And that is my sign of the apostrophe. Is it nice? My sign of the apostrophe. Mm. All right. Right. Another use. It is used to show possession. Singular nouns take apostrophe and s. Singular nouns take apostrophe and s. So let's see. Kofi's chair is not in the room. Kofi's chair is not in the room. We have Kofi apostrophe s. Singular nouns take apostrophe and s. So Kofi's chair is not in the room. My mother's television is not working. My mother's television is not working we have mother apostrophe s my mother's television not mothers and as in uh, having two or three mothers no we are just talking about just one mother but then it takes an apostrophe singular but takes an apostrophe s my mother's television is not working aku's dress is quite bad aku's dress is quite bad whose dress is bad is aku so we are talking about just aku Singular, but then it's taking um, an apostrophe S. Daddy's car is not at the car park. Daddy's car is not at the car park. We are definitely not talking about more than one daddy, just a daddy or just one daddy. And then we are using apostrophe S, you know, to, to suit that. And then... Now, still on the apostrophe, plural nouns that ends in S have only apostrophes. Plural nouns that ends in S have only apostrophes. Now, let's look at these examples, and I guess you'll give me more. The students' files are 20 in number. The students' files 
are 20 in number. What do you see here? The students' files are 20 in number. The other one we spoke about, singular nouns taking apostrophe and S. Okay, so for example, Kofi, Kofi's apostrophe S. Singular nouns taking apostrophe and S. This time round, we have the plural nouns that ends in S. So the students, they are plural already, but then we have an apostrophe after the S. The students' files are 20 in number. The next one, we have the footballers jerseys are beautiful. The footballers, they are plural. The footballers, a number of them. I mean, the team, their jerseys are beautiful. Are you, are you, are you getting the, the points? Are you jotting down the, the ideas? Mm -hmm. Right. We also have plural nouns that do not end in S have S and apostrophe. Plural nouns that do not end in S have S and apostrophe. Remember the other one ended you know, with a plural, but had an apostrophe after the S. This one, the plural nouns, they do not end in S, but have S and apostrophe. So let's look at these examples. The women's coal pots have been stolen. The women's coal pots have been stolen. The women, so they are plural. Women do not take S, even though they are plural. We have women, and that's plural. We don't say women's, okay? But we are saying women's here because of the apostrophe, and that's why we are bringing the apostrophe S. We are saying that plural nouns that do not end in S. Mind you, women naturally or, or, or should I naturally or automatically does not end in S. Women, and that is plural. Okay, it does not. They don't end in S, but have S and apostrophe. So, example: the women's coal pots have been stolen. The children's toys are in the big box. Children, that's plural already. Child is singular. Children, we have plural. Okay? And so, if children, uh, I mean, it's plural already, then why, are we, why, why would we add S to it? Well, we add S because of the apostrophe. So, we have the children's toys are in the big box. I would want to believe that I am making sense. Okay? Try and give me more examples. Right, then we move on to the very last one for the day. Um, that is the colon, the colon. So it is used to separate a list of items from an introductory statement. Such statements often have words as follows. It is used to separate a list of items from an intro introductory statement. Such, such statements often have words as follows. Now let's look at these examples. He brought the following items. So a pen, a book, a bag, and calculator. He brought the following items. So you see our colon there. We are naming them a pen, a book, a bag, and calculator. So it is used to separate a list of items from an introductory statement. Okay. The next example we have, my friend got me these stuff. My friend got me these stuff. So what are the stuff? We have shoes, we have dresses, makeup kits, and a wig cap. My friend got me these stuff. We have shoes, dresses, makeup kits, and a wig cap. Again, under the colon, it is used to separate hour and minutes in expressions of time. It is used to separate hour and minutes in expressions of time. You know our timing, right? So the first one we have 11.20 a.m. So we have the colon in between the 11 and the 20. We have 9.55 this morning. So we have the colon in between the 9 and the 55. 10.45 p.m. And that is our colon. We have 1.15 a.m. And that's our colon. 
it is used to separate hour and minutes in expressions of time. Can you give me more examples of the timing as in a.m., noon, p.m.? Okay, using the colon, using the colon, okay? And this is my beautiful sign of the colon. This is my beautiful sign of the colon. Right, another one. It is used to separate the salutation from the body of a business letter. It is used to separate the salutation from the body of a business letter. Examples we have, dear Mr. Godson, there you see a colon there, dear Mr. Godson, we have dear sir, dear sir, mind you, it is used to separate the salutation from the body of a business letter, not just any letter, but a business letter. So we have dear Mr. Godson, you see the colon there, dear sir, we see the colon, Dear Madam Grace, you see the colon there. Right. I have spoken about full stop. I have spoken about colon, question mark, apostrophe, and the comma. Five things we did today. Okay. And I am going to give you very, very, I mean, very, very simple exercises to do. And as usual, you know, Auntie Jackie, I mean, does one with you or prepares one for you with the answers okay with the answers and then the other one you're going to do them yourself but today trust me i didn't do anything for you i want us to do it together or better so you are going to answer them and send them to me okay so you arrive the correct punctuation marks to complete each sentence and i'm saying that i dealt with question mark I dealt with comma, I dealt with full stop, I dealt with um, colon, and the apostrophe. So we are going to answer these together. Right. Number one, I can't come to your house. I can't come to your house. Now, which of these um, marks do you think will be there? Could it be question mark? Could it be colon? Could it be full stop? Um apostrophe which one i can't come to your house i believe um we are going to need an apostrophe okay an apostrophe coming in between um the n and the t in, the, in that phrase can't so i can't it means that we are going to have the apostrophe up here C A N apostrophe T. Right. The second one. My favorite team won the game. My favorite team won the game. In your opinion, what do you think will be the correct um, mark to use? The correct punctuation mark to use? I think it is going to be a full stop. My favorite team won the game. That will be a full stop. Number three, do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? And like I said, I didn't bring the answers. I am, I am trying to answer my own thing. And remember that I'm going to give you your own exercise as well. Nobody's helping me here. I am doing this myself. Okay. Do you know what time it is? What will it be? Will it be full stop, colon, apostrophe? For me, it's going to be a question mark. Do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? A question mark. Number four. The preacher asked us to read from Luke eleven thirteen, Matthew 7, 7 or 77, which one? And Genesis eleven thirteen. So, mind you, we are using the punctuation marks. So we have question mark, comma, full stop, colon, and then apostrophe. In this particular sentence or in this phrase which of the marks will be used the preacher asks us to read from luke 11 13 it could also be read like luke 1 1 1 3 until the the, the correct punctuation is placed there we can say it anyhow 
Okay, so the preacher asks us to read from Luke 1 1 1 3, Matthew 77, and Genesis 1 1 1 3. How are we going to do it? So let's see. I think we need to put in the colon. Okay, the colon. So we have the preacher asks us to read from Luke 11 colon 13. Then we have Matthew 7 colon 7. And then Genesis 11, and then the colon 13. Then it makes sense. So you see the, the, the placement of the uh, punctuation marks and the effect. If they are not placed properly, it reads different meanings. It brings out different ideas. Okay. If I should bring a question mark at the end of this, it wouldn't make any sense. If I should bring a full stop, it wouldn't make any sense. But the colon makes sense. And then finally, he came to the school with a pencil, an eraser, and a bag. He came to school with a pencil, an eraser, and a bag. Which of them would suit? So he came to school with a pencil, comma, an eraser, and a bag. He came to school with a pencil, comma, an eraser, and a bag. So this is my assessment. I have dealt with my own. I answered my own here. Okay. Now it's up to you. Assignment as usual. And like I keep saying, you guys are surprising me. You are doing so well, you know, by, you know, doing the assignments and sending them to me via my Facebook and Instagram account, Jacqueline Click. And I'm so happy reading from you. Honestly, I have some names I'm going to mention someday because they keep trying, they are trying, and they are doing so well, and I'm super proud of them. So if you want me to mention your name here someday, somehow, you better try and answer some questions and send them to me, Jacqueline Clegg, Facebook or Instagram, okay? So now this is for you, and I would want to believe that you are writing them very fast. Right, so write the correct punctuation mark to complete each sentence. I dealt with these five, comma, full stop, colon, question mark and apostrophe and that's what i'm giving you i'm not going to give you anything outside that okay so number one the tall lanky girl plays volleyball well the tall lanky girl plays volleyball well which of the marks are you going to use number two they came to see me yesterday they came to see me yesterday number three when will kofi write his final exams when will Kofi write his final exams? Number four, I will come if only your father's car pick me. I will come if only your father's car pick me. And then number five, Azuma Nelson was a boxer. He beat Jeff Finish. Azuma Nelson was a boxer. He beat Jeff Finish. So I have this for you. And you know how you do it. You are going to answer them and send them to Auntie Jackie via Facebook or Instagram. Jacqueline Click. And I'm gladly going to mark them for you. Like I said, I am going to mention some names here because I see how, how happy they love to work with me. I see how serious they are. And I can't wait to read from all of you. Okay? So that's it. I expect that you write this quickly and very fast. So we dealt with full stop, we dealt with comma, we dealt with colon, we dealt with um, question mark, we dealt with apostrophe. And I explained each and every one to you, each and every other person to you. I explained everything to you and I gave examples. So this exercises or assignment should be very, very easy for you. Okay? Right. So I expect that you have written, I know that you have written this. And then you're definitely going to answer them to me. So that's why I bring, or I end up, I bring my lesson to a close. And so end of presentation by Jacqueline Kunedwa Samoa. And I would want to believe that you enjoyed yourself. Honestly, I did. I did. And I have learned new things here. Okay. And so I want to believe that you have enjoyed yourselves. And you are going to definitely do the exercise and send them to me. So like, come your way again next week. What can I say? Or what do I mostly say? That you need to keep learning. We never stop learning until we die. And I keep saying that we are not dying anytime soon. So like come your way again next week. All I can say is that be good and know that I love you.
बाय सब्सक्राइब टू अर यूट्यूब चैनल जॉय लर्निंग टीवी